Fantasy Baseball Picks and Bets presented by Prize Picks. JT Hayes, Run Pure Sports, runpuresports.com. If you're a loyal subscriber to the Mayo Media Network and watch the videos that we put out almost every single day, then you're very familiar with the concept of Prize Picks. But if you're not, Prize Picks is going to set a line using DraftKings scoring fantasy points over or under for a player on that given day. Your job is to pick whether that player is going to go over the amount of points or under the amount of points. And if you haven't started yet, you can go to prizepicks.com, enter code MMNMLB, that's MMN, like Mayo Media Network, MLB, and you can get a $100 deposit match. Like this video, subscribe to the Mayo Media Network so that you can take advantage of these free picks that more often than not come through on a daily basis. We've got a big 13-game daily fantasy sports slate on Monday night and a couple of lines that Prize Picks has put out that I think are particularly enticing on this slate, starting with the Cleveland Indians taking on the Baltimore Orioles at home. Our old friend Dean Kramer going to be called back up from the minor leagues, it looks like, to start this game. Again, things may change. But as of right now, it looks like he's going to be called up to start this game. Dean Kramer giving up a slate leading 2.6 home runs per nine innings. And Price Picks has set the line for over or under fantasy points at 6.5 for Eddie Rosario. Eddie Rosario off to a bit of a slow, sluggish start here. But I think a visit from Dean Kramer and the Baltimore Orioles bullpen which is bottom five in home runs per nine in bullpen average in the major leagues is something that will get this offense jump started. I think that that line is just a little bit too low for Eddie Rosario. He doesn't need to hit home run. He can get a double. He can drive in a couple of runs. He can steal a base here and there. So the over on Eddie Rosario, 6.5 fantasy points on the Monday slate against Dean Kramer and the Baltimore Orioles. Another line that I like that Price Picks has set the Colorado Rockies after a weekend in New York, losing two of three, but winning on Sunday in City Field. They get an enormous park upgrade. They go from one of the worst parks in Major League Baseball into the best park in Major League Baseball for offensive scoring into Coors Field in Colorado. They're going to be taking on Austin Gomber and a bullpen that just has almost nothing left. We've seen it over the course of the last week when they got lit up by the Miami Marlins in Miami and the Reds on Friday and Saturday in Cincinnati. Manny Machado, eight and a half fantasy points is the line on him. He loves playing here in Coors Field. And I think despite the fact that Austin Gomber has been very good Over the course of the first six weeks of the season, I think this is a game where San Diego is going to get right and right in a big way. So I'll take the over on that 8.5 fantasy points for Manny Machado. It's going to be 100 degrees in cores thereabouts. I think this is a game that the Padres are going to put up a ton of runs and Manny Machado going to go easily over that 8.5 point line. Once again, prizepicks.com, enter code MMNMLB, get a $100 deposit match. That's MMNMLB, like Mayo Media Network, MLB. And I'm recording this Sunday night. Things could change. That's why you should also get on over to runpuresports.com, enter code RPSHEATER25 when you join, and you'll get 25% off of your first month's payment. We've got a Discord, Core Plays, a Playbook, For every single slate, no matter what sport it is, we'll have one for this 13-game slate on Monday. Visit us, runpuresports.com. One of my favorite things to do every week on this video is talk about what happened the last week in Major League Baseball. What are the main stories? What's going on? Which teams are trending? Are there big injuries? And there's no bigger story in baseball right now. There's no bigger story potentially in professional sports right now. Then this discussion about Major League Baseball's crackdown on pitchers using foreign substances. We're talking about pine tar. We're talking about spider tack. Anything that gives them a little bit of an advantage, allows the ball to move a little bit more, 
And since this story came out, since teams were put on notice that, hey, you better police these situations because otherwise we're going to do it ourselves and we're going to start suspending players. And so far that memo is not done. Major League Baseball is still working on the fine tuning of what exactly their disciplinary program is going to be for this. But we've seen pitchers take this pretty seriously. And we've seen a number of different outcomes amongst Look, the aces, the best pitchers in the game. On the good side, Garrett Cole threw a gem in Minnesota. Again, maybe that's part matchup where Minnesota is striking out a ton against right-handed pitchers. I don't know. Jacob deGrom, another gem, lowered his ERA to under a half a run or right about a half a run per nine innings against San Diego. San Diego scuffling a little bit, at least until Sunday in particular against right-handed pitching. That was a phenomenal start. Carlos Rodon today against the Detroit Tigers, almost, almost real close to another no-hitter this season. He had a phenomenal outing against Detroit. And Aaron Nola against a New York Yankee offense that was missing Aaron Judge and missing Giancarlo Stanton and has been scuffling a bit lately. All outstanding performances, fantastic performances on the bad side. We're talking about the Milwaukee Brewers rotation over the weekend. Brandon Woodruff, not a terrible start, but not what you expect from Brandon Woodruff. Corbin Burns, same thing. Not a terrible start, but not exactly the dominance that you've come to expect from Corbin Burns. Trevor Bauer, for the fourth start in a row, not a great start. And and let's break this down with Trevor Bauer because one could say, hey, this is kind of partly matchup, right? At Houston, after throwing nearly 130 pitches in a dominant win in San Francisco, okay, you can forgive kind of a less than stellar start. And again, he hasn't gotten blown up necessarily. He's still striking guys out, still pitching pretty well. He pitched against the Cardinals at home, but he did give up a couple of home runs there. He pitched on the road at Atlanta, a tough offense, but an offense that... Look, they got shut down by a rookie right-handed pitcher in Miami on Saturday evening. So it's a matchup that maybe he should have done a little bit better. But then you get to the matchup on Saturday against the Texas Rangers, who had been putting up absolutely no runs against anybody. And Trevor Bauer gives up nine hits and four earned runs in that matchup. Look, it's still too small a sample to say that this is impacting Trevor Bauer or any of these other guys, including Shane Bieber, who had another down start in his last four starts. The only start where he's been really dominant has been against the Detroit Tigers. It's still way too small of a sample to say that these guys are affected by this, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. It's definitely something to keep an eye on and something that as daily fantasy players we want to take a look at in terms of how much should we spend on these pitchers and do we know whether or not they're going to have success based on matchup or based on the fact that, hey, they're just great pitchers. So something definitely to keep an eye on as we move forward. Definitely a lot more offense, at least anecdotally, over the last seven to ten days in Major League Baseball couple of other big stories going on. I talked about Jacob deGrom, another dominant performance against the San Diego Padres. Even more impressive that he had just faced them in San Diego, and yet he still shut them down for six innings. Then he left the game with a reported injury strain of a flexor tendon, and it looks like, according to what the Mets say now, he's not going to miss a start. He's expected to make his next start. And we'll have to follow that real closely because the Mets over the last couple of years not been really forthcoming on injuries. And their medical staff for a long time has been a little bit difficult to trust. But I will say this. They were right about DeGrom about a month ago. He was not injured. He just had a strain. He came back and he pitched fine. It's going to all depend on the matchup and the salary that DraftKings sets him at for how we approach his next start this week and what we expect from the New York Mets. The Toronto Blue Jays, I mean, this is a really talented team. It's it's an incredibly talented offense, as we saw on Sunday in Boston. Hey, look, maybe they forgot to put the balls in the humidor. I don't know, but Toronto scored 18 runs 
Home runs by Vlad Jr. Home runs by Lourdes Goriel. Home runs by Marcus Semien and Bo Bichette. And two home runs by Teoscar Hernandez. And look, this team is built pretty well. They've done a pretty good job putting this team together. They're sitting in third place right now in the American League East. And props to them because they've been moving around a bit. They had to spend their first month playing away from home in Toronto, down in a very, very friendly hitter's park in Dunedin, Florida. Now they've moved up to Buffalo in Solon Field, where they played last season. And the fact that they're still so close, with as explosive as their offense is, suggests that, hey, this team is going to be a contender this year. And look, if you get to the postseason, they've built a pretty good rotation, the way that they've turned around some of these pitchers. Hanjun Ryu, pretty good pitcher, pretty good real-life pitcher. We don't like to use him all the time in daily fantasy. Robbie Ray is having an absolute resurgence this year. And they brought Alec Manoa up from the minor leagues, and he pitched really well in his first start. A little bit of a downturn in his second start to be expected from a rookie pitcher. And pitched okay, well enough, against the Chicago White Sox in his last start. I like the fact that they brought him up early enough, get him some big league experience, because they'll need him should they get into the wild card or better and get into the playoffs. And then even Ross Stripling, pitching pretty well this season as opposed to what he did last season. So the bullpen is the biggest liability here for the Toronto Blue Jays, but man, they are an exciting, exciting young offense to watch, and they're going to have to be dealt with in that American League East for years to come. The San Diego Padres, as I mentioned, lost 2-3 or three in New York. They were scuffling, but on Sunday, Manny, Manny Machado, but more so, Fernando Tatis Jr. said he was tired of losing. He had a grand slam, middle of that game, to put the Padres ahead and give Chris Paddock a big win. He and Machado went back-to-back, so even though they lost, I think they are going to come out of their slump here as they head into Colorado. We'll talk a little bit more about that game and that series coming up on Monday here in a little bit. And look, the New York Mets, I mean, mm, they are first place in the National League East. They have a three-game lead over the Philadelphia Phillies. They're not scoring a ton of runs, but they're absolutely not giving up almost anything outside of that game that I talked about on Sunday This is a a pretty good team. It's surprising to see because of the injuries that they've had. You've got guys like Billy McKinney and Kevin Pillar turning in stellar performances for this team. Mason Williams playing in the outfield. I mean, Luis Guorme came off of the injured list today, and that was like a big boon for them to get this guy back. So they're not scoring a ton. But they're absolutely giving up almost nothing. That bullpen has been really phenomenal up until today when they did get torched up a little bit by Fernando Tatis Jr. and Manny Machado in that game. But it'll be an interesting race because the Phillies' bullpen has sort of come back to life. The Atlanta Braves' pitching situation as a result of injuries and just not a very good bullpen whatsoever despite their talented offense. I think it's going to be a really, really interesting and tight race in the National League East all the way through the end of this Major League Baseball season. As I mentioned, a 13-game slate on Monday night, a lot of different pitching options. It's not quite the plethora of choices that we had on Sunday in terms of top-end pitchers and to sort through those, but there are a couple of options here that, at least as I'm recording this, I think I like, and that's why, once again, things could change you should go to runpuresports.com, enter code RPSHEATER25 to get 25% off of your first month's payment because we do have a playbook, a Discord, and core plays as things change throughout the day, as lineups come out, perhaps even pitchers change. We'll have all the updates there. But as of right now, a couple of guys that I'm looking at that I think are in pretty good spots. We'll start with the Chicago White Sox taking on the Tampa Bay Rays at home in Chicago, Lance Lynn, 9.9K. Pretty steep price, but for a guy that has a 28% strikeout rate on the season and a Tampa Bay Ray team that is striking out 28% of the time against right-handed pitching over the course of the last three weeks or so, 
I think this is a pretty good matchup for Lance. I think it's a pretty good matchup based on the pitchers that we have to choose from. If I'm going to spend, I'm probably not going to go into the 10K range for Tyler Glass now on the road against this White Sox team in this same matchup. Not saying he's a bad play, and I'm probably not going to pay the 10K for Sean Manaya at home against the Los Angeles Angels. It just seems to me that in this range, I think I'll go with Lance Lynn as my top pitcher here on the night against Tampa Bay at home. Getting past that, that spot, the first pitcher, we want to pay down a little bit. We want to find a cheaper pitcher, and it is all season long, it seems. It's been a little bit tough to find those pay down pitchers. Obviously, I don't think anybody played Joe Ross today, put up an absolute gem against the San Francisco Giants. But guys, performances like that have been really difficult to find. There is one guy that, and, and, and look, if you ask me right now, are you confident in what you're about to say that this guy is, is going to be outstanding on Monday Night Slate? I'm not. I'm not. But I'm looking at pricing. I'm looking at the matchup. And it leads me to Jake Arrieta. 6.9K on DraftKings. He takes on a New York Mets team that, like I mentioned, they're just not scoring a lot of runs. They do still have a lot of injuries uh, injuries on this team. They still are running out guys like Billy McKinney, like Luis Guillorme. And there is some swing and miss, some more swing and miss in this offense than you would normally see. The park, City Field, not conducive to run scoring. It is a humidor park. And it's going to be cool and it's going to be a little bit damp on Monday night. So as of right now, if I'm going to pay down, I'm going to look at Jake Arrieta. Again, this may change. That's why you need to get over to runpuresports.com. Enter code RPSHEATER25, 25% off your first month's payment. I'll have a slate strategy written up on this slate by around 6 o'clock on Monday night, and we'll have core plays and a playbook out. But right now, if I'm building lineups and in a perfect world, nothing changes. I think I'm looking at Lance Lynn and Jake Arrieta as uncomfortable as a play as Jake Arrieta has been this season. One of the reasons why I think we need to find a lower price pitcher who can get us maybe into that 15 to 20 fantasy point range on DraftKings is the pricing here. Pricing getting a little bit tighter on DraftKings as it does every year. No change from last year, but the two stacks I like, I think the main pieces we're going to have to pay up for. I talked a little bit about the Padres coming to life on Sunday, and they get a big boost in going out to Coors Field, a place they love to play on Monday night. And I think I mentioned earlier, it's going to be hot. It's going to be close to 100 degrees, 96 degrees projected temperature at game time. Austin Gomer has been really, really good. Really, really good. He pitched his last game, though, in Lone Depot Park in Miami, which is one of the best pitchers park in the game and now he's got to pitch at home against one of the most high-powered offenses in Major League Baseball featuring really talented right-handed pitchers. I hate to cop out and give you a Coors Field offense but I feel like I've got no choice on this slate. I just think that they are in the absolute best spot here beginning with Tommy Pham leading off 5k on DraftKings. We know that Tommy Pham has power. He led off the game in New York today with a home run. We know that he's got stolen base upside as well. We also have Manny Machado who hit a home run on Sunday in New York. He's just 5.3 on uh, DraftKings. Fernando Tatis Jr. hitting a grand slam in that game in New York. He's just 6.1 and honestly I would probably pay somewhere in the neighborhood of 7k, 7.5 for him in this matchup against Gomber and the Colorado Rockies bullpen. And then one underpriced play in this game, Will Myers, always seems to play really well in Colorado. Just 4.4K in this matchup. Like these Rockies a lot. They'll be popular. Uh, excuse me, like the Padres a lot. They will be popular. And I think that's fine because I think on this slate, your best chance of finding offense is from the San Diego Padres in Colorado. Second offense I like, I talked about. Eddie Rosario and the over on his prize picks line six and a half earlier in this broadcast. And I like the Cleveland Indians against Dean Kramer. Dean Kramer giving up 2.6 home runs per nine innings, being called up from 
Triple A to start this game in Cleveland and the Baltimore Orioles also giving up some of the most home runs as a bullpen in Major League Baseball. A couple of guys I like here outside of the aforementioned Eddie Rosario. Cesar Hernandez, just 4.7 on DraftKings. Cesar just seems to almost hit a home run every single day, every single slate. He's been really hot of late. And Ahmed Rosario, 3.7, hitting in that two-hole. Ahmed Rosario, real, really good talent that they got from the New York Mets in that Frankie Lindor trade. Of course, we can't forget about Jose Ramirez. Jose priced up at 5.7K here to go along with the Rosarios and Cesar Hernandez. And if you wanted to make it a five-man, it's a really good matchup for Bobby Bradley. Big, big left-handed power against Dean Kramer, who gives up a ton of home runs. Bobby Bradley just 3.7 on DraftKings on this slate. So the San Diego Padres in Colorado and the Cleveland Indians at home against the Orioles. Two stacks that I like quite a bit on Monday night's slate. Let's close it out with a couple of bets that I like on Monday night. We're going to start in Seattle. It's one of the late games. I do like the Seattle Mariners money line. They're taking on, it looks like, Kenta Maeda returning from the injured list to pitch against the Mariners here. Mariners had a really good series against the Indians outside of Friday night against Aaron Savale. They did get to Shane Bieber on Sunday, and I suspect that... As usual, Kenta Maeda always has some type of pitch limit, but coming off the injured list, I think he's going to have an even lower pitch limit. And look, this Minnesota Twins bullpen just has absolutely nothing to offer. They've moved Matt Shoemaker into the bullpen. He pitched over the weekend, gave up a bunch of runs. Randy Dobnak, who got lit up by the Yankees during the week, has been pushed to the bullpen. He gave up some runs on Sunday, so not sure who exactly is going to be available, but I think that at plus 112, this Seattle money line has some good value in it. I think this team can get to Maeda and can certainly get to this bullpen at home at, I think it's still called, T-Mobile Field in Seattle. Another play that I like, look, I hate to do it. Again, it is Coors Field. I do love these Padres. I like the Padres. Run line, minus one and a half. It's just a minus 108 favorite, but I think that the Padres are just going to absolutely destroy Austin Gomber and the Colorado Rockies on Monday in Colorado. It's going to be hot. The bullpen there, not quite as bad as Minnesota's, but still very little to offer to challenge this very dominant right-handed offense of San Diego. And if you parlay them, you lay a $100 Bet down on the Seattle money line and the San Diego run line. That'll net you 410. You lay 1,000, it gets you four. You net, you lay 10, and it gets you 40, and so on and so forth. You guys can all do the math. But things may change. So like this video, subscribe to the Mayo Media Network. Visit runpuresports.com or runpurebets.com. we got a bet side that will be talking you through all of the best values in terms of lines and player props on the day we've got core plays a discord we'll have a playbook up for this slate on monday night enter code rps heater 25 you get 25 percent off of your first month's payment follow me on twitter at jt hayes jr i don't tweet a lot but when i do you should really take notice this episode of fantasy baseball picks and bets presented by prize picks subscribe to the mayo media network like this video and run pure on Monday's slate.